the best part of your week is about to begin. This is the time where we talk shop, swap stories, and share lessons from our wild adventures in the creative industry. With each and every lovingly crafted episode, we strive to bottle that magic, warm, electric feeling you get after coffee with a new friend or attending a fantastic breakout session at a creative conference. You might start as strangers, but you'll leave as friends. Buckle up, settle in, and get ready for this episode of Making a Mark. Hello and welcome, friends, to another episode of Making a Mark. I am joined, as always, by Ashley, the educator now, Ulmer. And I guess that's not fair. You've you've been an educator prior to this, but now you've got a new course up on Pro Church Media. Oh yeah, what? yes, yeah. This one, that one was a big a big puppy. I'm excited about this course. It was a so I've had okay, a lot of work. Yeah, it, it, that one did. Yeah, but I like it because the first one I did was a mini course. The second one was like an intro to Illustrator course. So it was really basic. This one we get more nitty gritty into the the weeds and into stuff. The so nitty gritty. The nitty gritty. So it was good. That. I, yeah. I, I'm realizing that uh, it feels like every week you're pumping out a new product, a new offering, a new class, a course, something. And I'm just like, so, guys, uh, still drawing logos. If you need one of those, uh, come on over <laughs> well, here. See, but that, yeah, that's just, that was really just random. Like the, the pro church thing I got, we did that back in the fall and they just posted it this week. So it like literally uh, came out. So I was like, this was very timely because I don't have anything else going on. So I was like, that, that works that's good. Perfect. So that's yeah. Perfect. Bring on the buckets of gold. Uh, <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm really excited today, Ashley. Uh, I f- I was, we were talking kind of in the green room how I feel like more and more of this show is uh, me being Mr. Us, us as a as a show here being Mr. Rogers. And we're going to go tour the font factory today and yeah. see how fonts are made and, and and answer lots of fun questions about that. Yeah, I'm uh, not going to lie. This this is the first episode that I've actually been like a little intimidated because. I oh, I thought you were going to say excited. Like this is the first no, no, time no. I'm excited about. No, an I'm episode. very, I'm very excited about this episode <laughs> as well. But I'm intimidated because I literally, you know, I've been in design since 2007. But like, as far as like designing fonts or even just that world, I'm like, I have no idea. And so I like don't even know how I'm going to attribute, like, contribute to these conversations. But I hope I can just add some some joy along the way. Yeah, well, that's that's you're you're not alone there. I have made one bad font in my life, so I've gone through that that process. But I think that you and I, especially for this episode, are in the same boat as a lot of our listeners. We're like, ooh, that's uh, it, it seems like there's a huge chasm between uh, I can do graphic design and I actually understand what goes into like a well constructed like type family, and like there there is an intimidation factor there, and I think that's where growth happens. So let's yeah. jump on in to the discomfort and bring our lovely guests on board. Who we got joining us, Ashley? So today we have three amazing typeface designers and just designers in general. We have James, Daniel, and Maddox. I don't know if I said them in order. I apologize. Yeah. We're getting them in order. Uh, Come on yeah. up. The price is right and you're here, guys. <laughs> we won. We did it. <laughs> you won. You made it to the illustrious <laughs> title of a guest of Making a Mark. Uh, we're so glad to have you guys. What we want to do is have y'all introduce yourselves. Uh, we'll go James, Maddox, and Daniel. Cool. I'm James Edmondson. I run a type foundry called Ono oh Type Company out of Oakland, California right now. Got two kids, both girls, one and four. Off oh, the one year old's going to turn two at the end of February, and Time um, keeps on slipping. It's it's really tremendous, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I've done a little bit of teaching. I do all sorts of stuff uh, on social media to try and remind people that we exist in different ways, and I'm thrilled to be here on the Making a Mark podcast. I love that. Definitely going to lift that little sound bite. No, I literally endorsed. was going to say that. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, Josh, you need to keep that. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Actually, that should be a thing we do for our guests. Like, hey, you have to say a nice thing about us in your intro so we can yeah. use that in program yeah, material. Yeah, they, they do that on the radio stations all the time. I was They're just going to gonna- yeah. I was just going to say that. Miley Cyrus, and this is WJXTL yeah. 1900. <laughs> I used to work for a, a Christian radio station back in the day, and we literally would do that. Like, we'd be like, hey, you know, I don't know, 
I can't think of a Christian artist, but anyway, say you love M88 and they would do it for us. Anyway. I love it. I love it. Cool story. Maddox. <laughs> that, was, that was great. Actually. Howdy. You're about to tell that James does this type of stuff way more than me. Um, I am so glad to be here also. I live in Athens, Georgia. I also Georgia run a boys. Type, Georgia boys. Uh, go dogs. Um, I run a type foundry out of here and Brian Brubaker is the other uh, – one of the guys who helps out and he's in Charlottesville, Virginia. I have two girls also eight and four. They're crazy. They will get you good. Um, and that, yeah, we have a great time here. And then also I have a board game business called Keymaster Games. So I'm like joint doing type foundry and games. Or okay. In yeah. Incredible games. Incredible. I, because Beautiful I was games. looking, I was in the gym this morning. I was like, all right, I know some stuff about the other two guys. I know your work, but I don't know much about you. And I was trying to get a little prepped. And I was like searching your name, looking like other places. And a YouTube video came up from 2018. Where oh my you, gosh. I was like, <laughs> this looks like him. It's his name. These, these, like the, the display behind him was like fantastic and kind of your, your style of work. I was like, is this him? Does he make games too? Josh, just, you need to bring that up. I need to see this. Okay. I'm like living the prestige what, what? here. I have a secret twin and we both just do uh, different. No, I wish. <laughs> I have, I have um, wished I had a secret twin many times in life, mostly to do the the work that I don't want to do when I'm, when I'm like tapped, but yeah. But yeah, game, I, the, I got into fonts first and, and love making them. We can talk more about just the similarities of fonts and games where you have mechanics, but you're also trying to give people a feel of mm. the world that they're playing in. Um, and so I got into games with a friend and that's been, amazing sense what's, and i try to the balance name of that both one? worlds uh key master games is the name of the company parks is our biggest game which is like about hiking the national parks and then there's some other ones like campy creatures and other stuff that we do but they're like gateway style games where if you didn't if you haven't played games recently you can jump in there pretty easy and learn them and get going that's so cool cool an absolute stunner capers that oh, one that's this off. is delightful have you um I'm not trying to hijack this on games. <laughs> this no, is I love this. Sure. This is so cool. <laughs> Look at Dog, this website. This, God. That's, this, this stuff will always get me. There's two things that, that will always get my seal of approval and get me to just be real jazzed about your thing. One is like a, uh, an animated logo, and the other is things that explode and open. Boom. And you animated got, you got logo, one of those or the logo there is MD Nichrome, and we like customize it a bit, but shout out to Mass driver. Mass driver. Nice. That's right. Yeah. Looks so good. Dog, this is fantastic. And it, it and it really is like I don't know if like the the general public feels this way, but as a graphic designer, like even when I was like 9 days into this industry, I was like everything that looks nice now gets like higher uh weight in my world. So like if I'm going to buy like a coffee grinder or something, like and it's it's got a, like a, a good label or good packaging, like you get bonus points and I'm probably going to spend way too much on you instead of, you know, the alternative monopoly deal. That mastermind deck was a sneak peek at some upcoming fonts there too, just as a heads up. Hey. Hey. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, cool. Uh, Daniel, how about you, my guy? Yeah. Uh, my name is Daniel Swartz and I run a little one man shop uh, doing letterpress design and uh, printing. And I do, you know, all the old school stuff with movable type and wood and uh, ink and paper and, you know, impressions on the paper and all that jazz. And, uh, you know, a lot of it is kind of, it's all design. It's all based around typography. It's more of a fine art approach than, than what I was doing previously in my career, uh, career which was more client based. Um, but I'm starting to get back into that with making custom prints from wood type for digital designers. So there's this nice kind of like, circling back around making custom stuff for other folks to use stay at home yeah, dad I'm, i got it what <laughs> no, no no go ahead go ahead uh, other than that i got a couple of kids do the stay at home dad thing get them breakfast and off to school and out to the studio to design and print all day and run the house so it's a good deal i love it are That's you guys awesome. is everybody here um working either like uh, i think uh james i think you've got like a studio out back in your yard maddox are you working from home or are you going to an office basement we used to have an office okay. and then or like a co-working space with friends and then covid happened. okay yeah cool so everybody's working from home everybody has kids we all we're all juggling the the stuff i thought i was actually gonna have to jump in there and i put my daughter back down to bed but she my wife is uh handling that one so 
Um, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the uh, how it's made section. So what I'm going to do is pull up your Instagrams, and Ashley is going to ask you uh, about a specific thing in here. It'll be a fun yes. surprise. We're going to go back in the same order we went. So we'll start with James. Let's okay. rock. So this one, when I saw this, so James, I as I told you in the green room, like I went and I read your life story and all this stuff, and I, I didn't follow you before this. I didn't know anything about you before this, but when I saw this post, I freaked out because I legitimately have this product in my home and I kept it because of the packaging and the, the typeface. And so the fact that you designed it and like a little bit fangirling out a little bit right now. Wait, what but are you talking about? I'll, you got to stop you. us. Where, where is it? Actually, keep going. It was down. It's the, oh, do you want down. me to just okay. tell you? It's the, it's pink. It's the Ernie ball. Um, that's oh. right. That's right. So here's the thing. Um, there it is right there. I, I did a typeface based on that lettering. They haven't even used it on the strings yet. Really? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> allegedly, they're going to at some point. This is lettering from, um, I mean, the style is taken from this lettering artist, Raleigh Crump, who is really mm -hmm. active. Gotcha. In the, okay. What okay. a last okay. name. Yeah. Incredible artist. He worked at Disney. Um, did, okay. did most of his career at Disney. But he, uh, I don't know how into this story you want me to get, but he went to high school with Ernie Ball. They wow. were buddies. And then um, when Ernie Ball launched his guitar, guitar string company, Raleigh Crump did all the packaging. And then when I worked with Ernie Ball on this uh, project, I got to see their archives of all the Raleigh Crump stuff that had been drawn for them over the years and what he did was so cool the earn the the ball family christmas cards he he did an illustrated christmas card for them for years and they're so cool. so cool um so yeah the the lettering that's on the packages right now is kind of a mishmash of some stuff drawn by raleigh other things done by a bunch of ernie ball employees over the years and photocopies of a scan and Gotcha. All that thing. And okay. So my job was to kind of clean it up. But as far as I know, they haven't actually used it on the streams. They use it in some marketing and stuff. Okay. And I, I dig the style. I wish I could say that our fonts were on the streams, but they are not, Ash. Oh, and dang I'm it. not here to spread Way to poke that wound. <laughs> <laughs> well, still, I like, well, either way, I kept the, the package. My husband bought my son strings last year, and I literally kept the package because it just is so beautiful to me. So either way, I think it's awesome. So good I job. I mean, yeah, packaging, you know, you can have any kind of relationship to it. But at the end of the day, it's going to move stuff. You know, they mm -hmm. were doing records without designed packages and, and covers for a long time. And then they, they changed that and they're like, Oh, you know what? We actually sell a lot more records now. So um, yeah, it's, it's nothing new. And uh, you would not be the first person to buy a package of Ernie ball str uh, strings and, and keep them because of how they look, you know, yeah. it's just, Bright colors, cool type. It's a yep. winning combo every time. <laughs> it is. Listen, we do have a, a red alert, urgent question as to where you landed on what to put in your drawer, James. Dude, Brian, I'm so glad you asked. Um, <laughs> I In my drawer right now, I have my sketchbook. And I have a, a remote for my light. Let's turn that off. Just to prove it. Ooh. Oh. oh there wow. we go. Old James. Oh, yeah, there we go. Then I also <laughs> have a remote for my air conditioning unit. That almost now, looks like an old iPod. I thought it was at first. Does that look like an old iPod? Well, not <laughs> not <laughs> now. When you put from it up the close, 80s, from the eighties, they released the secret the iPod back then. Yes, and, uh, really exactly. Nice. This is this is before away, Steve okay? Jobs had eliminated the nine <laughs> buttons on the iPod. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm My sorry, bad. guys. It, uh, excuse me one second. I have to take a call. Hello? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. No. I'm on making a mark right now. I have to go. <laughs> See? I told you. <laughs> oh, crazy, oh, crazy, gosh. guys. All right. 
Fort Foundry. Would you prefer we call you Maddox or Mr. Fort or Dr. Mr. Fort? Maddox is what all the people are calling me these days. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <no. laughs> Maddox is great. <laughs> um, it is weird when my kids' friends call me Mr. Maddox. But uh, okay, yeah, Fort, here we go. Here's some stuff. We're awful at Oh, Instagram. wait, wait, wait. You don't get to pick. Ashley, yeah, yeah. Picks. I, I've I'll already picked. So Travis go. Picked. This one's very easy. No, go to the top, Josh. Go to the top, okay. top, top. It's the <laughs> first one. post. First one. I picked Bada that boom. one because I thought it this was This one cool. should be top of mind. Top of mind. Exactly. The sweet, wonderful Spa sisters did this design. Uh, they're out in California. James, do you ever get to hang out with them? No, I oh would love to gosh. one of these days, but I haven't this, yet. This makes me feel a little better. Uh, I, they actually were... I asked them to be on the show. I've sent out feelers every so often. A lot of people ghost us. Um, they did not. They very politely and I think honestly said they were just too busy. Um, but yeah, that's a yeah. They are very. Makes me busy feel better that some sweet projects for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like this one, I'm just kidding. No, they were nice enough to spare some time and, and throw some fun ideas at Granway was a new family released. Uh, Seth Nickerson was like the main designer behind this family. And we've been doing more of that where like, uh, maybe people who grew up in graphic design are doing brands and stuff and made some letters for a brand come in and are like, mm. Hey, let's make a family together. Um, as we can take our, like what we've learned over the years of designing type and kind of help them figure out how to forge these letters into a good place um but seth yeah does really great work and then yeah typical hood spa slash what we try to do it for is just make stupid stuff um so like dial k for kill instead of dial m for murder they had a good time just making silly specimens rebel with a cause instead of without one front window rear window all the things there you go i love it i love <laughs> um, it yeah so the hood spa did an amazing job on those and it's just like yeah specimens are the most fun i feel like i'm tired by that point <laughs> james does a much better job of making awesome specimens but uh, yeah, I think uh, we so we will hire out designers or work with people to do some fun specimen work. And to James's point of packaging, specimens can really sell a family just to show where mm -hmm. it can go. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it maybe oversells it and you end up buying a family. You're like, oh, my gosh, this doesn't actually isn't that flexible or whatnot. And they yep. obviously maybe kerned and did some other things to make these look as good as they did. Yep. But, um, mm -hmm. For the most part, we try to do a really awesome job of, of making some fun specimens. As a as a user here, um, I've definitely experienced both sides of what you just described. Where, you know, I'd written something off, or I'd seen it before. I saw like one weight of it. I was like, eh, pass. But then, like, you'll see a, a specimen, or like, it, you know, for for those of you that's a new word, like a an example of like how it could be used. Whether it's like a, a fully like illustrated piece, like we've got up on screen here, or just you know, nice looking word color combinations. Um, and you go like, ooh, I actually could use that. Or a flip side. They've picked the sample word that has all of the coolest glyphs and alternates in it for the, the specimen. You're like, this thing comes with six alternates and they're all in the thing. You're like, oh, this is going to have some killer swashes and like way fun things to do. You spend $45 or something and it's like, oh, oh okay, I see. That was that was the special trick. I saw it. And uh, my word has none of the cool characters in it. Uh, and then the other side of that, maybe it's a feel good moment for designers, but I think uh, some type boundaries like don't do any specimens. They have awesome sites and you can like do yeah. you know, type testing and whatnot. And maybe that's a feel good of like, oh, I feel like I've discovered this hidden gem that I've, I've found this way to use this family that maybe people don't see from the get go. Uh, and so and there's both sides of that, like you're talking about. Yo, in the world of uh, DJ sample guys, which I know virtually nothing about, I feel like this is the same thing as like the the crate diving thing where they'll go just like flip through stuff and try and find new special ingredients that nobody else knows about yet. Um, yeah, because sometimes sometimes the 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 type choices are the that secret sauce. <sighs> Daniel, yeah, what are we what are we looking at for you, my 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 amigos? Ash, what did we pick for him? Um, it is so go down a little bit down down it was one of his yes you can but i mean i guess you can go to the original post but oh i ordered that one there it is right yeah there. i've got this That's in my pink. office yes yeah so yes, nice you can uh, that's awesome yeah all right dog i before we jump into this i do want to hear the story on like how you kind of landed on this one um but like what are the big differences in you know i don't i don't get messy i don't paint things i don't have like 
like the, it's awesome the, the the concept of like letterpress or using the woodblock type and lino cut like all that whole mm-hmm. world like those are the things that i like on instagram and i think are fascinating I have no <laughs> desire to get out in the garage and like actually do it so like was there were there any things that you're like oh wow this is super different than i expected before uh your journey into this world like from graphic design um i mean well the good news is as a designer I've been dealing with type for a long time right and so you mm-hmm. kind of like understand balance and, and kerning and letting and, you know, putting a grid together and all that kind of stuff. It's just everything is way, way slower, right? There's no alt left mm. uh, to move stuff. If I don't like how a character is, I got to go find a piece of wood that that's size and then, and then cut it down to, you know, 12 line and try and shove it in there. And that's too big. Then I got to find a smaller piece of wood or a piece of paper. Or, and then, uh, okay. you know, you got letters that don't fit together like a T and an O or something. You just can't jam in there. So I got to go out in the shop and, you know, cut a little little hole in there for it to fit everything in together so it looks, you know, somewhat proper. So it's just, you know, if you really care about details and the craft of letting making letters fit, this is a good thing to get into. <laughs> All right. So you want to hear how big of a fat dummy I am? Okay. I had, I had this, I hadn't really like weighed it or taken stock of it, but I had this like it vision of you guys – bought a house and there happened to be in this barn a treasure trove of like <laughs> materials <laughs> machines letters and you're just like digging through there like oh how fortuitous like i i found them and so i i assume you're like buying these or like you have some kind of big like grab bag that you're sorting through but you're talking about like actually crafting uh the materials here or the the, Some, the what sometimes the the type yeah set? the letter block what, what is this Letter block, okay. Letter block, yeah. So it comes from all over the place. You know, there's auctions um, that, you know, I hit up all the time. eBay is obviously uh, there. Etsy is good for finding a character. So if you're just missing one of something, you can go find it Uh, maybe. But it's, ah, so the issue is. It's so fun. Yeah, it's real fun. It's kind of, it's like, it's like being Indiana Jones, but slower. (laughs) And, uh, (laughs) Kind it's of. like Indiana Jones, but <laughs> fonts and no but danger. Fonts. This belongs in a museum. Uh, so the issue is, so when typefaces were designed by a lot of these foundries, there's no like copyright rules. So other foundries could go in and just like copy yeah. it from the specimen from the manufacturer. So there may be an X, for instance, I was dealing with last week. And you think you find the other X that matches it, but it's off by like the smallest margin, but it mm. makes it so much heavier in the layout. Oh, wow. And so then you're like, what do I do? Do I try and manipulate this thing? Do I carve something new from linoleum? So finding matching stuff can be can be difficult. That is fascinating. So what, like these these letter blocks? How yeah. how old are most of them? Like, are they like they're old? You, like super? Like what what would be like the the like, date? Not like Gutenberg okay. old. Like no, not, not <laughs> like Gutenberg Jesus old. time, right? Like that old. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I Ashley, I don't think there are printing stuff when Jesus or... was alive. <laughs> I think that was like the 1500, 1600 zone, wasn't it? I know yeah. that. I'm joking. <laughs> um, you know, I have a wide range and it's hard to tell because a lot of type doesn't have stamping, like doesn't have a maker's mark that tells you okay. exactly who made it and when. So there's some guesswork you have to do based on like how old the wood looks and feels and then like okay. when that design probably started coming out. Sure. Um, but I probably have some type that's maybe a hundred years old wow. uh, that I'm still working with. It's awesome. I got a box of this one stuff and it just had layers and layers of paper on the back because type can lose height over time or it can be um, milled incorrectly. So mm. some other printers for you know decades and decades had been pushing this stuff up with shin, uh, thin pieces of cardboard. And that's cool to see that history, but it's a kind of a guess how old some of it is. That's cool. And then another question, what? um, is it like when you're, when you're, you know, in the process of, you know, stamping the paper and stuff, is it kind of similar in that like the ink is, would the ink be similar to like screen printing ink? And are you curing yeah. it like with heat? Same kind of process? Air dry. Air dry. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, you Everything could probably UV long. cure it, you know, okay. or use a heat lamp if you wanted to. Um, but I just do air drying, just hang it up in the studio. And after a couple of days, it's usually dry. Cool. But yeah, it's the same deal. Instead of a squeegee, I use rollers. So I just roll the ink across it, whatever colors on I need. On the letter block. And then you're the literally blocks. stamping it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. What's your, awesome. what's your best selling poster, Daniel? What's the one that just like annihilates sales? 
well, I always work in limited editions, so I never do more than 50 of something. Um, but, he hates uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to be swimming in the money. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, create without fear came out. I did, a, I'm doing a new version every fall of this as kind of an artist inspiration print. And that one went really, really well, um, this last fall. And I forget what the total run was, but it was a pretty good size. And I think it was gone in like four or five weeks. So it's pretty great. What's the, what's the, like the best spot? Is it this Etsy shop or like where, where are you slinging, slinging prints the, the hardest? Uh, mostly Etsy. Cause nobody lives close to me. Cause I'm in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> yeah, but I do a couple of vendor markets. I have open studios and people can come in and, and you know, either learn cool. stuff or I'll do purchases and that kind of stuff. But mostly I just do Etsy sales and then ship everything out from our tiny post office every morning. Love That's awesome. Stuff, man. That is, this feels like a Hallmark story waiting to be made. <laughs> I love it. Um, guys, so I, I kind of, I mean, we, we don't really have like one. I know that's the, we lied to you basically because uh, the, the gist of the show is we ask one big question and we riff on that the whole time, but we don't have a question. We have a topic today. It's fonts, obviously. And I, I guess what I'm looking for from you guys is just like broaden our horizons here a little bit. Um, I think I speak for myself and a lot of the guests or the, the, the audience when I say like, I love design. I love type. I just feel like there's this huge gap between what I know and, and, and like, once you get into the real world, like, it's like, you're either a graphic designer or you went to college and like have read 80 books on type design and there's like no in between. It feels yeah. like in a lot it of It feels ways. like a new level. Like it's like you guys are next <laughs> level and we're just down here like these peasants, you know? <laughs> and, and so anytime, <laughs> You know, you've got your clients who are here like, this looks awesome. I love this. And then you go into the comment thread and they're like, your kerning is off and the weight on your on your crossbar on your T is way too heavy. And I'm like, I'm just, we're all just standing here kind of awkwardly in between those two. And I want to gather more from this other side, if that makes sense. And so, like, I love Abstract on Netflix. I'm sure you guys have seen the episodes yeah. on, on mm -hmm. type from that and 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 those things but yeah where if i say i'm i'm wanting to do better i'm not going to go to college for that specifically i'm not trying to sell fonts what what would i do james you're up first uh, yeah i i was gonna say i'll ramble on this general topic if if you want me to ramble but, on yes, my way son. this is uh there's there's no <laughs> rules here it's outback steakhouse <laughs> uh thank god get me a blooming onion uh <laughs> i We'll FedEx I, one to you shortly. I think the the type design world kind of gets a bad rap sometimes as sort of a nose in the air sort of industry. It's or... mostly James's fault that it's that way. <laughs> <laughs> Pretentious you, on purpose. You know what I mean? <laughs> that it's like there's there's some yeah there's some pretentiousness that goes along or you fear like you said your kerning will be judged or something like that and you know what there are these like closed invitation only slack groups of real type oh. snobs that are just you know saying the terrible things about people's work all the time or what there's just the dirty know, like, underworld of right, type design right it it exists it does <laughs> yeah i okay. i don't want to be one of those people but uh they are out there and i think because type is just so rich in its own history and there's so many rules and conventions that go along with it uh newcomers can feel very intimidated because there's there's just like so much i've done a lot of teaching and a thing that we hear a lot from students that come in as graphic designers with an interest in type, something along the lines of, I thought I knew about type. And it turns out I just, it, it was just the very tip of the iceberg when you think about mm. all the, all the stuff that goes into this at a very, you know, macro level is crazy or and, micro. And you level. can I don't see know. it too. Like again, if even if your end game is not, I want to release a, you know, an eight weight type family. Uh, your end games, I want to design better. Like you can see in somebody's stuff, you're like, man, that just all fits. Like right. it, it works. And that's, that's that, like all those little micro like principles, like working together, somebody who knows the rules and plays by them. 
Yeah. Um, I, and I, I said, think... forget all that. I'm just going to draw messy <laughs> letters and call it uh, my style. And and now we're made a <laughs> you do wonderful it. career out of it. <laughs> you can do it. I say sometimes that anyone can draw a letter. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little bit harder to do a word or a logo. Um, it's a uh, it's a significant leap than to do like a long phrase, like a hand lettered phrase. Um, and then we start thinking about an entire paragraph and, and doing something that'll work in that long is really hard. Then you think about a page, right? It's just yeah. like another level. Then you think about a book. Then you think about a series of books. And then you think about a series of like there's always kind of another layer to go zoom out it. to space thing out to like 400 galaxies right here's the earth at this size and but you I, you can't just jump into design or i couldn't personally just jump into designing a book face you know some sure. people can do that um but my kind of intro to i don't know matt maddox if this is similar in your own personal history but I had to come in through lettering to kind of just feel like I had any kind of a foundation. Mm -hmm. But the thing I want to be an evangelist for, sorry, it's taking me a long time to make this point is it's okay. We got some time. The, the people <laughs> that kind of create this pretentious vibe in the type industry are, are hurting it. You know, mm. it's, it's a terrible thing. I want to, be welcoming to say, hey, if this is something that's interesting to you, let's talk. I'm thrilled to talk to you. Maybe we can go over a couple of principles or, or, or something that's going to make you feel a little bit more confident, whether you're kind of refining a logo, modifying some type, choosing a typeface, whatever it is that applies to your life. You know, I don't think it's in anyone's best interest to say like, hey, like leave that to the professionals, you know, mm. you stay in your lane and, and I'm over here doing this thing. It's, it's completely silly. And, um, it's an esoteric field. I get that. But any time that anyone has ever read anything typeset, they've been looking at the work of a type designer. And now mm. for anyone just walking throughout the world in a given day, they'll see a thousand different typefaces, like literally, you know, so that tells you that there's a lot of us out here and yeah. there's a lot of people that are that are doing great work, especially now. And I wish every graphic designer had their favorite type designer or had their favorite type foundry mm. or if they're already there, had their favorite type foundry in every country or something like that. They just had a more personal relationship to it. Like, oh, I love that. You know, like that really moves me emotionally and i'm a fan of of this person yeah that's that's the thing that i want uh for for all graphic designers um but it's it's kind of hard to get there if you're working in-house using the same fonts every day sure well i would say uh one of the the wonderful uh opportunities for a lot of our folks who are, are designing graphics at church is like the stuff rolls over monthly in a lot of ways mm -hmm. so it's like you have many campaigns every month related to the topic or theme or whatever. And so they do get the chance to, or I should say, we get the chance to try on a bunch of different looks and styles for size. Um, and while there is like, you know, some branded elements, it's not like you're working at like Texaco and you're like, here, here's the rule book, follow it for the next four years. Um, Texaco, so it's a great place. To, the gas I station? Know, I, don't, I don't know where that one came from. <laughs> is Texaco still in business? <laughs> <laughs> work at Wachovia Bank uh, in, the, in the corporate Texaco. <laughs> Just keep pulling them out, Josh. I love it. <laughs> Texaco. Let's let's see. Is there? No, I, I think they're done. Oh, sick logo. It's a star mm -hmm. step with a circle. Something. Get back. I can speak a little bit what James is talking about too, on just the whole. Uh, hold up, getting, hold up. I need to it, rub it, James's sorry. face in it. Read go. him and freaking this. we yeah. <laughs> Texaco Listen, exists. I, I apologize, sir. I thought Thank this you. was a defunct. It's gas not statement. it's not in New Mexico. They're done in New Mexico for sure. They're done in I California. Who needs New Mexico? Texaco doesn't. I need it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ash. Just kidding. Here. Just like oh, to be man. unnecessarily controversial. 
Uh, Matt, what were you saying though? Uh, yeah. So I feel like on what James was talking about, just the type industry and getting in there, I I still feel like I'm one of the peasants as you're talking about too, <laughs> you know, getting in. Like uh, I, as I was getting in, um, I, I think to James's point too, it, it reminds me a lot of music. You have a lot of music snobs out there and people who are like, you know, just critics and come into this place and like, let's digest this in this way and think about all the nuances here. It's very similar with music or songs or systems that you're making and you're trying to make all of this thing flow together. And even the word rhythm is something that's used in creating type where you're trying to create a nice rhythm to yeah. the words or whatnot. But all that to say, like music often comes out of like this love or this feeling and just being like, I just want to do this because it feels right. It feels good to do. Yeah. Um, I was doing that at the beginning in this way of like, I mean, I was a type designer's worst nightmare because I had no clue about type design. I was just like, hey, shapes and letters are fun. Let me try to do this thing. Um, and to your point, Josh, like you were talking about of like releasing my first few really bad typefaces just for free or whatnot um, and just and kind of getting in the industry that way. I think there's a bunch of different programs now. Glyphs is one of the ones I use. Robofont is one of the ones. James, you still use that, correct? All you done. bet, bud. You bet, bud. He loves it. Um, there's different like levels of, um, yeah, just programs and learning and whatnot. But Glyphs is an easy transition from Illustrator kind of into this world of Bezier and whatnot and how it works. It's it's getting like your mind around the system at first because as James was talking about, you're building a system that has to work together and you have letters that are um, going to require different spacing. So one of the mistakes I was making at first is I was just spacing each letter the same amount away from each other. But to Daniel and probably what he feels every day is like the to, to place type next to each other of what feels right. Like the A has so much more space around it. And so you're going to have to give it less space in that system as it mm -hmm. lines up with the H, which is a straight up letter, which is often going to need the most space is where James is, oh no, type co, oh no, or the control characters that you're starting to work around. And that's going to determine yep. a lot of your oh, family wow, or whatnot. Okay. Um, sorry for stealing that from James. I probably would love to share that. But uh, all that to say, <laughs> um, I think it just started off. I was in a lucky place. I was in Seattle. There was like a type Tuesday meetup that I would just go to and I would bring my specimens of stuff that I was working on. Um, and there were people who worked at Microsoft and people at Adobe there who had just come in. I was just some independent weirdo designer coming in with their stuff, but they would come in and give wonderful critiques and very helpful. They weren't in this like snooty hoity toity mode. It was like, man, this is wonderful. I love this parts about it. And really like calling um, to the parts of the family that were working the best. Cause they're that, to your point, Josh, you're like, Hey, this, when this word happened, it was a wonderful thing, but everywhere mm -hmm. else it wasn't as great or whatnot. And it's like yeah. in developing a family, you're trying to figure out how do I make those moments happen all over the place to create uh, a great picture in that. And so I, I got into it that way. I applied to go to a type school, did not get in. That was like back in 2016. Uh, and just have continued to do it on my own since. James has been to some amazing type schools and now he teaches or whatnot. Um, but I'm just saying like, I think that there's a bunch of different paths to it. James, I was talking about how you have been to type school. I applied to type school way back when, did not get in. <laughs> I've just been forging my path since. Which one did um, you apply to? I applied to Cooper up in uh, New York, like back in 2016 or so, uh -huh. um, and didn't work out. Then didn't, didn't nothing, <laughs> so nothing tells you. Yeah, please, please keep Kyle's doing working. it, and then uh, they say, "No, you're not good enough no, to, no, to be a part of this industry." Great encouragement. Did, was there. that the only time you applied? That was the only time I applied, and from then it was just going to be harder with kids and stuff. I tried to do one of the. They have a condensed program and, and an extended program. Uh, and Kyle Wayne Benson went there and I just vicariously met up with him like each week or every other week and learn from him. But there's nothing, nothing beats it than like drawing it. And that's what I think James will probably speak more to of just what he learned at KBK and like getting that, like, I, I don't have that. I, I work in the computer as much as I can. I try to get out and sketch, but I just feel more comfortable there. And I almost felt like an imposter because I couldn't draw letters well. Um, and it's about getting to the right answer. And there are a lot of ways to get there. And sometimes I take the slow way by all means. But I think that finding those ways of where, uh, Daniel, you could speak to this more of just where letters originate from and how they're getting shaped. Uh, and, and even the tools that are shaping and defining those letters can help you get to the right answer at times too, instead of trying like a bunch of different tools. Like this is the one utensil or not utensil, but whatever thing tool yeah. we have that can uh, uh, achieve this or whatnot. And so. Yeah. No, I think, um, I mean, I'm not designing.
type on a daily basis, right? I, I am using and, and right. compiling, right, and doing this thing. But uh, you're having to face the, the controls around that thing, though, right? Yeah. Like in yeah, word block yeah. letters, kerning wise, is kind of hard. You're going to have to figure out because they're cutting them in a way. What is your solution for that, right? Is like, yeah. okay, how did they solve yeah. that through creating this, um, this, this tool that you're having to use or whatnot? Yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, I'm a big advocate. I wish more people understood, like, the differences, right, the uniqueness, uniqueness of all the different fonts so they could see that beauty around them. Kind of like what James is talking about. You're surrounded by type all day. If you can't put little labels and categories uh, around for your type, you miss all this beauty uh, that you're mm. kind of moving between. And it stops you as a designer from pairing things um, well or pairing things intellectually instead of just by a gut feeling, right? So it's nice to have both sides kind of working together. Um, so that's super important, I think. And um, and the craft of like how the letters are drawn and how they're crafted goes into it too, right? You can, you can kind of segment type into things that were done calligraphically or things that had to be like incised or chiseled, right? That's a different, that creates a different kind of letter form uh, than other methods. And so just knowing those little differences, I think is a huge, huge tool for people. If I could, if I could recommend a book, because you're you're talking about, you know, if you're this level designer, we'll go up to the next one. There's a cool book called um, "Why uh, Fonts Matter." I think it's by Sarah okay. Hind. Have you guys seen this one? I'm about to I pull it up. It. Uh-uh. It's good. It's a. It's um, I think it's a very accessible read, and I think it opens up the eyes for a lot of designers. And uh, she goes by type tasting on Instagram. She's in the UK, I think. She also does workshops and. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, she's been doing a lot of uh, oh informal polls about what fonts match different foods, you know, and talking about why that is, uh, why we feel certain things with different fonts. There it is. Why fonts matter. Yeah. So it's a good one. It's a, it's a good introduction. That's perfect. Um, yeah. And so kind of just to recap what uh, some of the on ramps we've talked about already is. Okay, like, you know, maybe there is a meetup or a community of of folks that are getting into type, whether that's, um, you know, like a local thing or a remote thing that you're like a community you're joining. Right. Um, and another one you shared, James, was like if there's uh, it basically like trying to go, OK, getting your head above water, realizing, oh, their font foundries are a thing. P- different people make different fonts. Let me go find my favorite rather than just kind of like turning on the radio. Let me go find artists yeah. that I like and narrowing down by genre and then connecting people and personalities and, mm. you know, thought process to the thing. I think was another way to enjoy it and understand and appreciate and use it better. Um, great book recommendation. I'm actually going to, I'm definitely going to snag this. We'll drop links to all these things in the show yeah. notes today. But do you guys have, uh, whether it's a, a, a like a you know sub five hundred dollar course, a book, a show, a movie, some kind of like bite sized step similar to to what uh, Daniel's recommended here. Like, is there is there something to get somebody closer to um, you know being smart with? I mean, thinking with type is one a book that I remember reading like year one of oh, design, yeah. like totally changed uh, or like my perspective on all of those pieces. Uh, do you guys have any other similar recommendations? Yeah, Inside Paragraphs by Cyrus Highsmith, uh, oh, yeah. I think is uh, pretty decent. I mean, I should also mention our own PDF <laughs> we sell on our website. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Ashley, called, were you aware of a PDF called Oh No Type School? Um, I think I did see that when I was on James's when site for about entire... forty-five minutes. Yeah, I, think I mean, I did you see said that. you said bite size. It's twelve dollars, and it just talks. I, about yeah, I'm, but... I think it's perfect. We're about to pull it up. Is this the right one for the other? That the other is inside paragraphs. Yes, Cyrus Highsmith, true OG, real OG the game. Oh. Yeah, he he knows what he's doing. <laughs> and and uh, I'll say so. There's there's some folks that might be listening to this, watching this. And think like, this is getting real heavy, real nerdy. I'm really like, uh, oh god, we're, like, we're, real we're heavy. just at the very beginning, dude. This is- I, know, I know that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like walk it back and and encourage these folks. Oh man, that's fantastic. Going no, to type school. Not, um, those are just the the shirts. Uh, the, that's not even. Real. I just put yeah, where, the link in the in the chat. Thing? I put the link in the chat. I'm already oh. ahead of you. 
So, okay. I love it. Yeah. There you go. Um, no, I was, I was going to encourage everybody's like, Hey, you may think like, this is kind of out of reach or this is too much, or I'm not trying to go this deep in this world. Um, or, Oh, I, dear God, this sounds awesome. I want to make a career out of it. Like either one of those responses, highly encourage you guys to go check out some of these other resources because so many light bulbs came on for me as I was reading like, Oh, like I felt empowered, uh, maybe it's the right word to take more steps down that road. Wait, where do I find this thing? Did... It's go oh, to the bottom yeah, of the site. You Scroll can to the go bottom. To, yeah. There's a... <laughs> and then it says type school, right? In like the center on the bottom. On the bottom. Right. Got yeah. it. Probably. Got it. Uh, yeah. See, I know your site better than you do now, James. I've been on it so long. <laughs> uh, definitely picking up this one. I'm going to need to make some uh, purchases after the, yeah, it's cool. The episode today. Well, so, here, here's the thing with, with all this stuff. Josh, I don't want to undermine your point here, but if you're saying, "Ugh, no thanks," I want to stay out. Learning of this, this, <laughs> this Not weird me. world. Not you know, I say stay out of it. You know, like if, if <laughs> get out and stay out. <laughs> if you are not like, if your heart is is not like excited by the idea of delving into the wacky world of fonts i said don't do it <laughs> just put your energy into the stuff that really uh makes your heart sing in in whatever way because i'm i'm sure there's something but <laughs> i i think what happens is we kind of look at the type world as saying like oh this is really far apart from me or this is mm -hmm. like all about I don't know, maybe it's just like all about branding or something. Mm. Um, but my my question would be like, what what font would you want tattooed on you? You know, mm. or what font do you want to wear across the center of your shirt? Yeah. Hey, you got a Helvetica <laughs> tattoo. All I'm right. safe. All I'm right. safe. Baby. Great. I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to touch that. Josh. <laughs> my next one will be Ek Ekman Sipler, however the heck you say I that mean, one. <laughs> I had a lot of friends with bleeding cowboy back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, okay, that's maybe a, wait a couple years. Yeah, yeah, that's know? what I'm saying. That's you grow like, up a little bit and yeah. Yeah. This but is this is my advice about, to anybody young thinking about tattoos is like just just wait. Just sleep on it for like two years because uh, <laughs> I, you just I, never I, know. I, I would otherwise I'd have a huge nautical star on my bicep. I literally uh, have a giant anchor right here on my chest. That yeah. I never showed you. It? There's a pro. No, version. I don't. I didn't realize that. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. You got to get pro version. Josh <laughs> is going. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> First perseverance. Perseverance. This is what I'm talking about. Wait, wait. But go under that. Go under that uh, perseverance tattoo that you just showed. Okay. And now look at the related images and you see the hand done ones, right? Yeah. The, 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 the top couple of results there. That was. Uh, yeah, these are nice. Yeah. So this is like a traditional tattoo strip style and you could, you know, make whatever suggestions you want about the, sure. uh, about the spacing on this, you know, maybe it's, the it's, S it's a, the it's e a vast improvement close. from bleeding cowboys. Well, what it is, is someone <laughs> who's, who's studied lettering and has made that their job and probably apprenticed under somebody and, and put a lot of work just into that so just putting aside fonts maybe we should just look at genres of type or mm -hmm. genres okay. of lettering um but I yeah because the there's a whole question, learning yeah. to your point there james like uh i mean i got in and the way that i learned designing type would be the one book that was like the book type bible for me of like going back to but then it was just also like opening tons of font families and studying them in these applications and trying to get as much from them mm. as possible you can do that right it's like you don't want to copy anything there by any means but you can oh wait why are they spacing things this way what can i learn from this to go like okay this is where this is the space they're putting between these characters and how do i learn from that if you're getting into more of the like designing type side of it same with yeah. scripts it, it was like learning a whole new uh genre that just it's super hard to solve and for lettering it's like man this is great i'm just making this one word work but with designing a full family of scripts james noted this from the accenting to like making all of the things work right it can kick your freaking butt mm -hmm. uh in a crazy way but just the different genres are even new things that you're having to learn every time um it, it feels like it sometimes but yeah 
Yeah, but just like to just see what you really like, what you really respond to, you know, what what logos you really like, what mm. what things yeah. you would see just a little bit of type, say on a 12 inch record or something like what would you want to listen to or, or what would you buy? Um, because it's not it's not so far apart. and Everyone has opinions about it. But we're all thinking about it as it relates to our job and our day to day. Mm -hmm. And I think an easier entry point is to just think about, no, this is just another part of my taste, like my taste in music or my taste yeah. in food or my taste in art or my taste in type and typography. It sounds weird and maybe a little nerdy, but everyone has it already, too. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's that's super eye opening. And and I think I think that's the just the really my uh, subconscious goal for this conversation is to close that gap between you either know everything about it and you're making them or you are a like somewhat clueless designer like picking stuff and you've got a better eye than your clients and that's kind of thing so yeah I, th I personally find this all fascinating and also mm -hmm. overwhelming and uh difficult so I, yeah. I, but i'm always i'm always like couching questions for our audience like hey if you're on this end of the spectrum or this end of the spectrum here are answers from our guests for you right um and yeah, another is... easy way of what you're talking about josh of you mentioned earlier of like hey we're spending up to 500 bucks like if you bought two of james's families you're going to instantly have something that's going to work well together just because of james's taste he's talking about hey personally like I, I'm getting my kickback right here from James after the show, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> got it. But just saying like a designer has taste, all of us do, right? And you're going like, yeah. I'm connecting with this font because this reason, there may be some technical reasons why something is good, but there's also just taste in the mix. And James mm -hmm. is going to design something a certain way, just like I'm going to design something maybe slightly differently because of the taste there. But just in, in choosing a, a foundry and buying two fonts from them, it can be mm -hmm. one way to at least... Up, buying good fonts is one part of it and then buying fonts that pair well together to create a unique palette where you're like cool this is this is doing something different than just having one thing there and just at least that's a starting point for designers in that way too if you're looking for like you're talking about the other kind of end of the spectrum versus the designing type side of the spectrum yeah i also see some people coming in to uh design and they're like oh my god enter the font enter is like the most beautiful thing i've ever seen in my life you know and you see tweets about this oh, oh there's man. so many tweets james there's just people just loving enter which is an open source font that is just like a, a slight change on roboto <laughs> <It's, Slash laughs> san francisco yeah yeah it's it's got a but this is um yeah this is coming so, from a kind of uh hanging up the spurs this is the the one to die with guys a slightly Swiss school of thought. The designer Rasmus, I know him. He's around the Bay Area. Very nice fellow. I like him a lot. And uh, anyways, when people go on to wax poetic about their love of Inter, my question is that's, that's really the one that's like doing it for you? Like the <laughs> The thing that is essentially purified water is you're like, oh, this is the beverage of choice for me. Like, sure, it is, <laughs> but um, there's a lot of great beverage options out there. And there's, there's some that might move you specifically. Yeah. And I think there's something that happens when you think about your specific taste like yes you're mm -hmm. going to have overlap with people all the time that's great that we have overlap it's fantastic that two strangers can go to some place and both talk about a sports team that they're interested in great but i think there's a shift that happens when you start doubling down on your own taste and eliminating the stuff that you have overlap with just because you have overlap with it you say like okay we both like that get that out of the way we both like this get that out of the way and then you get closer and closer to yeah. yourself and then from that i think is is a place where you can make work that's uh, like, maybe it's just more you i don't know james's well, version 
of pure water is basically, I think, just vodka. There's a level of, <laughs> I remember him calling me one time and being like, dude, I'm making this grotesque family. And I'm showing it to a friend. And they're like, this is still way crazy, dude. Like you're putting all of yourself. But I think he does that <laughs> in such an amazing way that, that connects. It, do, it takes the ethos of those, of those <clears throat> genres, but it's, it's injecting himself in that way. And it's like mm. so surprising every time that he's able to do that. And it, I, I, to what you're saying there, James, it just definitely comes through the work that you're doing. Thanks, Maddox. Guys, you're so nice to me, Maddox. <laughs> I wish you would come out and say something kind of mean, though. <laughs> I don't got it, man. I just try to be like, every time I meet with James, he always like offers me one bit of like thing to think on. And it's like, it just shapes the next like year of designing type for me. So <laughs> I got nothing, dude. Okay. Uncle J-Bone <clears throat> just comes with <laughs> truth bombs all the time. This is, right. uh, this is fantastic. And I feel like, you know, going back to the, the alcohol reference, James, I think what you're saying with the the inter thing, like, because like you said, then I go, oops, I've used that for work, and like I I like no, it and stuff. Use and, it, Drink and I know that's water. That's not what you're. <laughs> that's not what you're saying. But you're saying if you walk up to somebody and they say like, oh man, have you had Bud Light? Oh my god, like that's that's it, baby. Like that's the drink. It's of champions. Exactly. Like I've got yeah. I've got the T-shirt. Like check it. Like that's what you're talking about. Oh, you know and my favorite about- song in the world. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> that's that just does it for me i can't get enough just i just play it on a loop dude just keep it going <laughs> happy birthday all right so i, I want to say like this is not um uh a pat josh on the back moment nor is it oh wow like I've, I've been really strategic about my career and approach to type or any of that but i have like stumbled into you through your work and realizing like use this in a project Use this in a project. Use this in a project. Boom. Great. Skip. Skip. Thank you. Hate that one. <laughs> <laughs> use this in a use this in lots of projects. Use this in a project. Right. And so like I, I was like, oh, Degular's killer too. So I'm I'm, I'm realizing like, oh, like I have a a, ty- a type, a, a style, mm. and it's yours. Like I like your stuff. You are my yeah. my source for these materials. And I was re- that all clicked for me, Maddox, as you were talking about like. Oh, like, you know, uh, James come out of, out of the gate swinging, like volume is at 12 on personality. And that's a lot of what I designed too, is like, Hey, let's start with gobs of personality and have the client like whittle it down a bit from there, get a little safer from there. And so it makes sense that like my go-to, uh, brewer, if you will, make some real funky stuff. And then we, we, we button it up a bit as we go through the process. So I, I'm having a little like, oh, it all it all is making sense and clicking uh, moment. So but thanks what, for walking through that said, with me, guys. Josh there is right on. Like you don't want to go from too little to say, having the client say, oh, we need more. Because then you're uh, like yeah. emphasizing some synthetic or imaginary thing that wasn't even there to begin with. So you're kind of grasping at straws. But if you go too far, it's always easy to dial it back. Say, okay, mm. we're... We're just going to swap out a few things here and that tones it down very quickly, very easily, but it still has the essence. That is the important thing, but you can't yeah. dial it up if it's not there to begin with. Yeah, I mean, you're preaching right. the choir on that one. I'm i uh, I'm pro start with something that's a little too pungent and, and rein it in as needed. Ah, uh, well, um, Daniel, I'd be curious to know. So like you went from, uh, you know, we've kind of talked a little bit about your story, but like you obviously had a bent that direction or maybe some of these uh, things that you're more interested in the, the by hand pieces or like, you know, that cool, like overprint look that you can only get when you're actually, uh, yeah. you know, out there working with the paints and stuff. Who is your, like your, your rock star model? Like, Ooh, I've been drinking from this fountain a good bit. Like <laughs> uh, this is the type of stuff that I'm into. It is worth the tedium of manual type to, to go, down this road it was a really yeah, long I'm, convoluted question like who do you like that's the short version who do i like <laughs> i <laughs> i mean i think i think as a as a wide kind of spectrum i like those those happy accidents you know mm-hmm. i've done a lot of digital work over the years and um you know a lot of times you know it got to the point where i i was faking things so much to make them look distressed that yeah. i wanted to do it for real that makes sense. And I used to be mm-hmm. in, I used to be in like digital design and illustration 
and vector work. And it was all super clean and, and great for clients and all that. But there was just a point where I was like, I want, I want an artifact. I want something that I can't control perfectly. I can control the process, but not the yeah. output. And so that's kind of what led to this, to this area. Um, Is there anybody doing that? Uh, like who's your like muse or, uh, you know, it, even if it's like a genre, not a, not a band, but a genre. And you're like, yeah, that's my festival. <laughs> well, do you guys know Hatch out of Nashville? Right. I mean, they're doing fantastic stuff. They have a really wide spectrum of design uh, coming out of them. Uh, but I love what is happening uh, there. I mean, they're, they're top of their game. There's some pretty cool stuff, you know, and a lot of the overprinting, mm. um, but you know, they have a lot of blocks to work with, you know, their illustration is kind of, um, they do make stuff custom, right. Um, but they have a lot of historic blocks, which I love the feel that it brings. Um, and it's not, you know, every era cause design is, there is a fashion sense to design, right? Every era has a look. And so when we're making stuff in 2023, it feels different than in, you know, 2005, just because tastes progress and things happen. So I like that they've, they've kind of got a pin in a certain point of history and a lot of their stuff looks like that, you know, that kind of fifties, sixties feel. Oh, mama. That's yeah. So cool. Isn't that fantastic? This is awesome. Yeah. There's another so, guy, Brad Vetter, uh, he's doing some awesome letterpress stuff as well. Love his colors. Design. I, I would I would never kind of like work in his vein, but I have a huge respect for what he's doing. And I still find it really inspiring and in the way he uses space and type and texture. And he's definitely pushing the line in some places. Great stuff. Yeah. So I work a lot in like logo design, like, hey, let's create a special nugget that embodies your deal and rock and roll with it. Do you... Um, like, is that something like you've thought about like, oh, what if your logo work piece was, um, you know, literally carved out of wood and yeah. had some of those imperfections in it that were like natural? Because mm -hmm. that to so the type of work you've ever heard of, bumped into, done yourself, thought about offering. Starting to get into it, actually. Um, I, uh, I was able to get um, a laser cutter, uh, okay. which allows me to work smaller and more accurately than when I hand carve things. And so that's kind of like the next stage um, for hopefully doing client work is that I can start doing things that either match what they have and keeps it on brand, or I can design things digitally and output it and match it with hand carved elements at the same time. But yeah, you know, it's hard, it's hard to carve stuff at, you know, a point. So it's nice to have a laser sure. to do it for you. No, I mean, that, that makes sense. I don't, sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm just bumbling around in the dark, uh, trying to make, trying to achieve the effect that I want. But like, what I'll do is I'll say, Hey, like this, this font or this lettering style is like what I want. It's on the computer. I need it less perfect. So then I'll take it over to iPad or print it out or whatever. And then like retrace messily over it and add some little elements to it. Mm -hmm. to, and yeah. I feel like it's, it's basically like, the the cheesy microwave version of what you could do or it sounds like you are doing where you're like oh look, i like this what if we chisel it out and and, yeah. and then well, deal with the ink issues and the wood issues and and get something beautiful and almost uh un uh okay words are escaping me guys it's been a long <laughs> week i'm done i, th I think there's a you said there john it's not the microwave version if you're actually doing it you know, by hand in, in one way or another, I think that's a legit way of doing it. The microwave version of it might be applying the scribble effect on illustrators. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's, fair. Yeah. that's fair. That's the true and microwave. It, you go off the computer. Uh, you're in the <laughs> theater, I think. No, Josh, I like, I like what you're doing there. And I think, I think it fits. You have to fit the process to the client, to the project, mm -hmm. you know, not mm -hmm. every project has a budget, has the time to be able to do things. Um, you know, and you can control a lot more with digital than you can with what I'm doing. Oh here, yeah. You know, cause even, even changing paper stock here will change the impression of the ink on the paper. And so sometimes I got to go through this whole proofing and adjustment thing just to get something to look right. Yeah. You know, and that, that takes See, time. So that's the thing. That's where like, you know, you, you hit those guardrails of like, this is my lane. This is not my lane. Mm -hmm. Exploring the intricacies of type and like, oh, like what happens when the, you know, 
the, the wood soaks up too much of the paint. That's interesting to me. As soon as you talk about like this paper is, you know, ultra bright and this one is kind of, and like, it's going to show up photos. Like I'm like, this gives me gas. I'm out of here. Do not care <laughs> about paper and translating and how it works in sun. Like, no, no, don't yeah. <laughs> get back to the computer, Josh. <laughs> Uh, that's, kind of, that's how I kind of am with even talking about type and designing. Like, I think it's so interesting. And I think what you guys do is, is almost like magical in a sense. Cause to me, like, I can't even compute like how I would do that. Cause I, I don't know, just even spacing, like just that gives me gas, Josh, just thinking like I have to space them and figure out how they fit together. The like, I, can't even, I love yeah, this can't expression even. that gives me gas. Is that <laughs> something that you invented, Josh? It's a making a mark exclusive. It actually, it, it, mi it? it might be because I'd say it a lot. I've been saying it for years, but I've never heard another human say it because it's, you know, <laughs> it's the type of thing that you would hear out of like an eight year old or a 65 year old man. And like, yeah, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know I got, no, I, 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 I got can't. some of those. <laughs> I can't do that. That it, yeah, meetings give me gas. Sorry, guys, I can't. Make that. <laughs> I think it's so good, dude. I think it's so funny to me. <laughs> I imagine the response would just be like, Wait, "Everyone's what? always very confused when he says it." How does spacing type give you gas? Who was it? Wait, is that? Oh, really nice? so <laughs> yeah, we had a guy who's like real big on TikTok on a couple of episodes ago. And he's like, oh, yeah, with it, like younger. Who's the TikTok guy? I'm stuff. loving the talk these days. <laughs> loving the talk. His name is Ron Starling. And he's, he's, uh, so he was, when I said that exact, so I guess I said that like every episode. Ashley, you talk about the sauce or like the secret ingredient yeah. of life. And then I talk about <laughs> things that give me gas. Anyway, so yeah. I said that to him. And he said, oh, you're talking about like, oh, that's gas. Like, that's cool. Like, that's, that's good. I was like, no, opposite. This gives Grandpa Josh gas. Bubble guts. <laughs> Public. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys, I've had an absolute blast today. Um, uh, I, I asked I'm earlier. I'm a, I asked earlier what. Um, oh, you know what? I, I just thought of the prompt. I don't care what anybody said earlier. I've got the perfect thing. Uh, the prompt for making a mark today is bleeding cowboys wow. or bleeding cowboy. Whatever you want to do, whatever that means to you. Get out your Sharpie. Okay. Get out your piece of paper. Um, we're going to follow the name, the show's namesake. Uh, dear beloved audience members, if you would like to join us in this uh, wonderful activity, you can also uh, draw along live with us and then email me the artworks at hello at brightcoal.com. Rebecca's inbox is about to get flooded with sketches. I'm about to run over there and grab mine. Be right back. Yep. We all get extra time and we can talk, say awful wait, things. Are about we, Maddox. are we going now? Are we going? No, now? we're not going. We're going to, oh. we're going to wait on Maddox. I know that our guest last week, like drew for like James 15 is over there minutes. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last week we did this and Nick Goodner drew for uh, like a solid last 20 minutes of the conversation. Yeah. And then it was like, Oh, Oh, we weren't supposed to already have it done. <laughs> Fantastic. <She did. laughs> Oh, uh, this is good. This is good. We need that on a mug or something. The the gives me gas line a little bit. Sticker. <laughs> Man, this has been wonderful. Uh, one of our guests from actually last week, Dustin Harper, said this is the best episode ever. Um, and he was even <laughs> on an episode. So, and it's the one where I feel like Ashley and I have talked the least too. So basically, just this is a an utter dump yeah. on every other episode and every other person that's been on here. It's significantly um, guys, better with us not talking. It is. Uh, to that end, I think we should start because everyone else has already started, Ashley. Okay. Bleeding Cowboys, go. <laughs> Let us know in the chat what the heck we should do audio-wise during these moments um, because it always just feels a little awkward. <laughs> Wait, or you've I never done this before? <laughs> what? You say that like you've never done this before. <laughs> like you, we do it every week, and it's always awkward. <laughs> you have you. It's how long have time. you had this problem? Oh, oh since we weeks, started. Weeks. <laughs> how how so long? Actually, so how actually, long we have haven't been you? doing we haven't been doing the making a mark segment for weeks. We've we've only had like how many episodes? Would you say? Uh, I don't know. Uh, ten. 10 episodes. That's I don't know. I for, literally have no We idea. should have fixed it for sure. Yeah, we should. Well, you know, I, 
I don't think so. I think you could kind of lean into it actually as a, as a matter Just of Just let fact. it be dead time on the podcast. This... Well, I think everyone that's listening should participate also, right? <gasps> wow. And then I they post that. it with a hashtag and then That's fantastic. Oh, markers down, boys and girls. Oh, jeez. Wait, really? Uh, yeah, what? it's supposed to be Just bad, guys. That's oh. that's the name of the game. It's a bad drawing. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. Do we share them? <laughs> oh, we share them. Everybody, artwork's up. Hey, Ashley, that's Josh, sick. Mine's you so copy me again. Oh, oh that's good. I did a, a belt buckle that says that gives me gas. Yeah. What? <laughs> that gives that me is that's amazing. Of course you do. Oh, my gosh. Uh, James just trumps oh. us all. Dang. That's awesome. Wait, that's all right, now no, everybody's got to hold it up and explain your art. Show the class. I'll go first. Okay. I'll go uh, first. I forgot. It's been a long time since I like really studied bleeding cowboys. I was trying to draw a bee inside of the cowboy hat with the uh, like just copious amounts of like crunchy swashes <laughs> and then like little extra bits and then a bullet hole in the hat because he's <gasps> bleeding for in multiple ways. Violence. Pass Violent. it on. Okay. Ashley. So in normal fashion, I drew something kind of like Josh. Mine's a cowboy hat with also a bullet in his head, but he's a he's a <laughs> he's cute and slimy, like a cute a cute bloody hat that's guys. great i love <laughs> to see that Thanks. i would i would wear that i would i was i'll say i would wear that sticker i would i would buy that sticker uh with no context or backstory like that that just looks nice just call it bleeding cowboys there you go james how are we feeling big dog you got um, something that's like truly beautiful yeah thank you for calling for me big dog uh i took the cowboy theme and made a belt buckle and then i i was gonna put something else on it but then i just decided i actually just really want a belt buckle that says that gives me gas <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going it's with the that perfect place you know that's it's just amazing like, yeah yeah if oh they're just looking gosh. at that belt buckle josh you need to buy that design from james and then we can make it a sticker for the podcast oh yes yes please you know what <laughs> you guys it's on the house okay it's on <laughs> One's on me. Thanks, uh, Maddox. What you got? Oh man, this guys, is don't bad. forget to email your artworks to Hello. <laughs> there you go, guys. <laughs> I like Real quality I there. It. He's bleeding from his ear. I guess he he's, died. He's dead, he but he doesn't have happy. any arms. <laughs> he's happy, dead. He's, he's, he's die happy. Blink 182 reference there. Sure, whatever. Uh, I, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Daniel, yours look like the most uh, uh, artistic impression. That is oh, wow. so cool. Dang. I just panicked. It's just lots of dark shapes. <laughs> Dude, you that should panic so more cool. often. Dog. Yeah, <laughs> for real. That. That's yeah. sick. That That's so great. sick. You guys, uh, this has been truly fantastic. Uh, that's going to be a wrap for today. Huge shout out to our guests for today's episode. We'll have links for them down in the show notes below. Oh if you've enjoyed this today, um, Ashley, can your alarm go off one more time in this episode, please? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's my mom. She keeps calling. I'm sorry. Tell mom to wait. I've got to take the show. this. Come yeah, on. I've got to tell her this canned in, response that I do every time. If you've enjoyed this, I'm going to go through it. If you enjoyed this today, please drop a comment on the video. Very few things bring me more joy than YouTube comments. That's a show. Adios, guys. Wait, aren't you going to say?